everyone, Tom here. Um, welcome to my introduction to Celtic bass. Um, where to begin? So the history of history of Celtic music in the first place um, goes back to, um, well, I mean the Celts ranged from obviously the west coast of Ireland all the way to Austria. But a lot of Celtic music really just came from having a, a bard, traveling bards that would go to different you know, courts and so forth and Quite often, it was just one guy who would be playing. In the early days, it was the uh, the harp, which my mom actually plays. She plays the Irish harp, um, and be just one harpist, and that's why the uh, the symbol for this you can't really see it, can you? <laughs> it's a Guinness shirt. Trust me. Uh, the the symbol for the symbol for Guinness uh, is the harp, um, and then eventually the fiddle came along. And the fiddle people just took to it because it was the early fiddles were really really cheaply made, and you could just and um, um, it was you know good you know once you got once you got your intonation down um, it was really a great little portable instrument and um, you you'll find that in Celtic music it is and this is the point that I'm, I'm going to come to later but um, the the it's almost like the melodic instrument is also almost like the rhythmic driving instrument and you're following its lead so um, and that, yeah and, and Later on, this this music became more and more modernized. More and more people started to gel with it. We brought in the Irish flute and the guitar, uh, the piano, and then it became more and more modernized with bands like the Chieftains, and then eventually uh, Lunasa, Celtic Thunder, um, and Leahy. Um, so the equipment that I use, um, let's see. Well, I for for amplifiers, I tend to use um, in my 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 Celtic band, which is called Kukeli, um, which I'll keep show you a little. Card. That was us playing, Kukeli. In my band, I just do. I actually just use um, fairly simple combo amps. I don't. I don't use a lot of head and cabinet systems, just because you've got a lot of stuff you're packing anyway, and it just makes it a lot easier to have one simple thing, which you can then line out. Like it was kind of like our bread and butter when we first started playing was actually senior homes, um, and so it's kind of a little bit absurd to go into a senior home with a thousand watt head and cabinet system <laughs> like there. You know, so we tend to use um, little combos. Like I have, a, I have one, one of the older, older Kikeli combos here, which is an Ampeg BA112, um, which is a great little amp. Um, it gives you everything you need. And then if you're playing a bigger place, you just take its line out, or you can use a um, a, a loud, oh, not, not a loud box, um, a uh, you know a, a, a line out or DA box or whatever. That, I can't remember the name of them. The little box that you can run one to your amp and one to the board. You know, um, and for, yeah, like when we do, we'll, we'll, we often play shows like Beacon Hill Park, or um, the one that you just saw, we, we were playing Canada Day, and obviously, unless you've got a huge amplifier, you you just line up to the board, and then they take it, and, you know, um, but, um, but yeah, for, so it kind of works perfectly. For smaller shows, you use your amp, and for larger shows, your amp and the board, and sometimes just the board. Or, or in, at some gigs, you might actually, like, uh, what was it? One of the Canada Day shows, I showed up and they had a head and cabinet one and it was lined out. So it's like, yeah, don't, don't worry, Tom, just bring your bass with you. So, um, but one thing we've been using a lot, um, and I actually, I really feel bad about this because I, I don't actually know the name of the product, but they have things called amp stands, which is, um, it's, it's two, well, three parts, technically. It's the, um, a, a bass that kind of folds out like that, and then two things that run into it, and then you just um, the thing that the thing that you tighten controls how wide it goes, but it also allows you to put the things in and then seal them. And then your amp is nice and high up because the one thing, of course, is the amp when you're playing any show, the amp needs to be aimed right at your head because you if you, if if it's down here at your knees, you're not going to hear it. Trust me. I actually have played a show where I was standing in front of my amplifier, like no, in front of the amp in front of the speakers from the PA like this because literally not only could I not hear me but I couldn't hear Dave Cook which is which is actually my next point um, when you're in the band um, like I said the you take a lot of your cues from um, the, the flute player or the fiddler or the melodic player whoever that happens it could, could be a piano player as well um, because a lot of a lot of the shots and a lot of the changes and a lot of things will follow the melodic the melodic instrument. The rhythm section is actually much un, unless you're in a contemporary where there's a drummer. The rhythm section is actually going to be a little bit more stripped down. You're almost like it's almost like your role is the kick drum, 
um, which is why a lot of um, Celtic bass is actually fairly simple. And you're playing, your, your other rhythmic partner is usually the guitarist, because the guitarist will be playing, like, I'm not really a, a Celtic guitarist, but like, you know, he'll just be kind of like, so you'll be thinking like, you know, you'll be trying to bounce along to that. Um, uh, there won't be, there probably won't be a drummer. There is the boron. Which is, I actually have a, one, one second, I have a cheap boron here, <laughs> the boron, there it is, and I don't actually, I don't actually, oh god that's dusty, I don't actually have my tipper, which is the wooden stick they use, but it's like, I'm crap at it, but <laughs> it's, it's basically, it's, it's the only drum that's played obliquely, and you can link up to it, but it's, it's, that and there's also things like the spoons and the the bones, which is two sticks that um, Woody Wilson from my band, who plays flute, also uh, he plays bones, which is it's two sticks. They were ri originally rib bones that they play like. Tick, 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 tick. Now you're not really. I mean, it is a rhythmic instrument, so it will perk your as a you know if you're a trained bass player, it will perk your ears up because you're thinking, oh rhythm instrument, you know. <laughs> but you're still mainly focused on the guitar and the rhythm of the song. And what the guys on 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 um, the melodic instruments are doing. Um, so I think I've gone through that. And then of course basses. Um, I have basically two that I use. Um, I have a fretless here, and the fretless is really good for Celtic, especially um, I use a lot during like Christmas seasons or studio stuff. Um, you know, it's it's got a really pretty sound, and the main thing I like about it is it it's, it gives you a bit of a wooden wooden quality, which is great. It kind of helps you blend in more. Um, the other one is an active is, is my fancier of the two bases. <laughs> it's my new um, PV um, Jazz Jazz Elite. Uh, the things I like about this one is that it has it's active, and it gives you um, control for mids. Like that's one thing that's. I think Scott mentioned that um, if you're having a hard time hearing yourself, you can also give your mids a little boost. Because quite often, there'll just be a lot of sound going on, and you're trying to... You, you, don't, you, don't, want to, you don't want to end up... You don't, want to tra you don't want to crank your treble up too much, because you, you do want some extra treble. Like, I actually have the treble up more here to get more of that... More of that sound. Um, but you don't want the treble up too much, because you end, end up sounding like a bumblebee. Um, and with the mids, the mids can help you just to, to, to sit in a different sonic space than everybody else. So now, then you can hear yourself perfectly between that and then your amp stand, and you're laughing, you know. Um, so, uh, so being in a Celtic band, what to expect? <laughs> um, the kinds of shows, like I said, we, um, Seniors Homes was a classic one, like we started, I think our, we had two shows, one at a place called The High Gate, and the next one was a place, um, I, uh, Oh, I can't remember. I <laughs> see. Prague Mead Lodge, there it is. Um, and we did those two shows, and then the word kind of spread, and our manager kind of started, started getting calls from other shows, from other seniors homes. Um, they're a really great audience. Like, don't discount the seniors homes at all. Like, we got a lot of our first shows because of the seniors home shows. And... They're a great audience. They're really into it. They're really happy to have you there. Um, it's, you know, if you're bringing some energy and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and it, it, you, you don't don't think for a second that you'll be playing down to them. That's one of the main things. Is that you, you think, oh, I'll have to play softly. No, they love it. You know, that kind of acoustic music. It gives them. It gives them. You know, it gives them a spring in their step. It's great. Like one of the coolest things was you. Uh, there would be a. Um, a lady who runs, you know, works there, and she's like, you know that lady who is dancing? Yeah. She hasn't spoken to anyone in a month. You know? So the power of our music is wonderful in places like that. Um, and, and yours too, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, and then of course there's also, um, you go through, in, in a Celtic band, you go through seasons. Um, so we just finished... Uh, it's now March 23rd. We just went through St. Patrick's, which, as you imagine, is one of the busiest seasons you have, especially March 17th. Um, 
you know, you can always you can always find that someone who wants to hire you on March seventeenth. Um, <laughs> um, and then just before that is Robbie Burns, um, which is well, I think it's January twenty fifth. Um, and there's lots of great shows on that. And of course, that's we be playing more Scottish music during our during St. Pat's. We play more Irish music, stuff like you know Black Velvet Band and you know um, Irish Eyes. Um, and then the next season after, which is coming up now, is summer festivals. So there's a lot of public outdoor stuff. You can look you can look into your city and see if they you know see what's going on. Um, and then after that is Christmas. And yeah, Celtic Christmas stuff is is always great. There's a lot of music that it's a lot of really great Celtic Christmas music that you can find out there, and people love it. You know, like um, like one of the places we play is the Craig Derrick Castle, which we've played for years, and it's just fantastic. It's like this beautiful wooden castle, and the sound echoes through everywhere. Uh, a lot of Celtic music, of course, is quite diatonic, um, so a lot of it's in in D in usually D D G A minor E minor sometimes A. Um, but very kind of like you know it's it's usually yeah it's usually pretty straight chord um like one four five six two five one that sort of thing you don't you won't be you won't be going into a lot of odd odd chords um and uh let's see quite often and and yeah and with some and of course one of the things about celtic music is that it's you don't have a lot of standalone songs. Quite often there'll be there'll be more than two songs, some usually three, all in the same kind of set of tunes. Um, like with this one here, um, I don't know how well you can see that from here. No, you can't. <laughs> this this brings up a good point. This is now now this of course is you know this is how our band leader does it, but so it looks like that. But you get get kind of the idea. That's the snowy path set. And so with this one, you have three songs, Snowy Path, the Belfast Hornpipe, and the Harvest Home Hornpipe, all together in one song. And you learn from this one to this one to this one. And quite often, just like in, well, in the same way as jazz, you'll have a, a A section and a B section. And so you'll have, you'll go through, okay, so we're doing two, one A, two Bs, then two A's and one B. You know? <laughs> and you go, well, what is that? That's what this is. And you'll be running low. So it may be one, two, one, one, two, one. Then one, yeah, there's another one and two section, another one and two section there. Um, let's see. But yeah, quite often um, you'll have multiple, you'll have songs where it's like, oh, wait, wait, we do that song, I've heard that. And it'll be, it will be the same song, but somebody's renamed it because they've, they've changed a few things in it. So that's now, like one, one, one song might be called The Priest in His Boots. And it's, and a slightly different version is, you know, The Fox in the Meadow. <laughs> and then other ones... Like, uh, we do one called the Blackwater Pocus. The reason it's called that is because it was, what was it? Oh, Sleeve, Sleeve Lucro, which is, the, which is done by the Blackwater Band. We covered it, so it's called the Black, we call it the Blackwater Pocus. But it was originally Sleeve Lucro, which is named after where it's from. So it's a little bit like with coffee, where, like, you know, co Ethiopian Yurka Chafe is because it's from Yurka Chafe. Yeah. One of the challenges, of course, this, that's why I wanted to do this video. There's, no, there's not a lot of actual bass playing in traditional Celtic music. I mean, this instrument certainly wasn't around in 17-whatever, you know? So, um, quite often what you're listening for is the left hand of the piano, you know, whatever, whatever he's doing. And obviously I don't play Celtic piano, but like, you know... You know, whatever. And so if you, you can listen to that and kind of go, oh yeah, I hear what he's kind of doing there, you know? You know, <laughs> um, but quite often you're really just kind of you know going for it. There are there are some people to check out. There is like um, I know there's a bass player from Lunasa, obviously the bass player from Great Big C, um, but usually you're doing things like like um, laying back and giving the music as much room to breathe as it can. Like quite often building up is one of the best things you can do. So I have the Mason's Apron by the Dubliners queued up, which is in A, and this gives you kind of an idea. And basically, I'm just jamming. Um, I know I know the song is it's in A. Um, it's doing a lot of ones, fours, uh, ones, fours, fives, um, and I think there's a part. There is definitely a part where it feels like it should be climbing up a scale like that. So again, let, let them start. By the, let them start.
<laughs> Which isn't bad for a song I just heard now, <laughs> but it gives you an idea. Like you, you could just basically load any of these and just start going through it. And you know, was I getting all that perfect? No, but you can. It gives you a place to start. And then when you know, if there's a Celtic band nearby or a Celtic band who's interested in playing playing bass with you, or having you play bass with them, um, yeah, you could you could say, yeah, I've been playing along a little bit and trying stuff out. And just like um, like I haven't learned this one, but like a lot of other people on here, like Jacko said as well, learn the melodies, um, like, um, which I'll, I'll get to in a bit, but yeah, like the one thing I've been doing is with my own, with our band, um, quite often I'll, I'll learn the melodies for it and then I can actually make use of that, um, you know, like with Scotland the Brave. Types of Celtic songs. So uh, there's popular songs like the one I just did, Scotland the Brave, um, Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy. Uh, we just went through. I'm very, I'm, I'm very Irish at the moment, of course, it's like which explains the shirt. But we just went through St. Patrick's, like I said. So Danny Boy, of course, that's a classic. Um, I, I like I mentioned Black Velvet Band. Um, yeah, there's other names that are escaping me at the moment. Irish Eyes. But yeah, Scotland the Brave. Um, then of course is the air. Um, now, I'm, I'm probably going to get basically the details of this wrong, but the air is basically it's a slow song, it's a soft song, um, and I don't know if I don't think there are any specific time signature. These are airs. But yeah, this, there's some here in like this is um this is a, a great book if you can find this in your local library. It's called um, O'Neill's Music of Ireland, and this basically. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of melodies, <laughs> there is lots to get, lots to tuck into if you want to, um, which I've done a few, but I, you know, um, I mainly focus on doing this stuff. Um, but um, it's by Captain Francis O'Neill. Done. It has a 1850 melodies. <laughs> um, it was published just years ago, but yeah, I'm just going through that, and there's not. Yeah, there's when it comes to airs. There's no specific time signature. It's not like th like some of them are three four, some are cut time, some are four four, um, but yeah, they're usually very soft. They get you give it a lot of space. As the bassist, you'll be you'll be giving you'll be you know slowing it way down. Like this, this one's called "If Ever You Were Mine." Uh -huh. Wasn't a really great version of that, but <laughs> I haven't done that one in a while. But it was just to give you an example of what you know, classic air. You've heard them. I mean, one person who's made her career on airs, Enya. I mean, that's all you need to say. You know, <laughs> obviously not, not, not the more, not you know, not the Lord of the Rings melody, but some of her other stuff. You'll hear it and go, yeah, that's an air. Um, let's see the waltz. Um, a lot of, um, I think. Ah, uh, is Black Velvet Bell? There's, there's a lot of waltzes. A lot of, especially a lot of the popular tunes are, are waltzes, um, um, and a lot of stuff like 
you can bring waltzes in from like country like country like i said before country and celtic are very close if you one a good place to look a good place to work if if you can't find celtic stuff to work on uh, or celtic basslines that is you can always look into country music or blues both of those will give you a good solid foundation as well to uh, to what to study cuz there's a lot of i mean you can get a lot out of jazz but quite often you don't want to be that ethereal you want you want it to be solid and you know you know you know you want it to be solid you, basically like i said before you're the kick drum in the band um then the reels uh, reels are basically in four they're usually in four four um i had my, my flute as my flute player explained um they basically the, the melody of them goes by like like Really wanna, really wanna, really wanna, really wanna, really wanna, like that, you know. <laughs> so it's like ticka 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 ticka. And here's an example. This is called the Woodman Reels, which we did. Here we go. an idea and like that song right there was about to go into another part which is actually in D and the third part is back back to A again you don't have to memorize that specifically but it gives you an idea again of basically the Woodman Reels is Woody's set Woody wrote that he wrote all three pieces I believe or maybe I'm wrong but um, it's basically yeah it's what are the chords in that it's basically A minor G it's like I have to back go back over it now. Um, yeah, that's quite a common thing. That G E G minor G A M G. You know, so you, you're kind of in a position where um, you want to keep it going going forward. You you need to you need to keep you need to keep it together. Um, you are going through some simple ones, but don't go off into. <laughs> That stuff is not going to help you, you know? It's cool if you can pull it off quickly. You know, do something quick and back. But best, best day... I mean, honestly, if you just do this... Nobody's going to have a problem with that. You know, I was doing a little bit more flashy just because I've been doing this one for... I've been I've been with Kakeli now for about twelve years, so I know what's you know I know I know what I can get away with and what's mm, going to going to jazz there, um, but uh, the next is the jig. Uh, the jig is you know again one of the most probably one of the most popular things in Celtic. Um, let's see, uh, the jig is a six eight, six eight six eight melody, which sounds like jiggity 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 as opposed to really wanna really wanna really wanna. Jigs are jiggity 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 jiggity. Or, what else? No. <laughs> One second. Yeah, I, I, I tried to have these queued up, I swear to God. Let's see. So, um, this is the Willis jig in the Hey Johnny set. Hey Johnny being written by the uh, Rankins, about Johnny Rankin, who, who passed away uh, trying to save a bunch of kids. So, it's going too quiet.
should be just D, A, G, B minor, A, G, No Morrison's. Which is B minor. Then G, A, into D. G, A, D. Like a keep it simple too. Back to B minor. I'll just do B minor and, and it's fifth. Okay, out of seventh. <laughs> Back to the Willis. Now I'm gonna try to slap a fretless. Wish me luck. <laughs> Here we go. I got a little carried away with that one, but I'm um, sure that'll be fine. Uh, but that gives you an idea, and yeah, with, with, with the slapping thing, I haven't actually, that's probably the most complicated slap I do in, in Kukeli. Like, most of the time, it's usually just, it'll be just like, it's just octaves. Um, but it's good to have it there. It's kind of an extra, it's another color you can bring in. Um, there's also the slip jig, which is, a, um, which is really pretty, that, like that. The most common jig is is a double jig. The slip jig is an entirely different feel. Um, this is a slip jig called the butterfly, with Woody Wilson on flute. are a really great addition. Oh, good. I, put, I did put it in there. <laughs> polkas are a great addition to a Celtic set. Uh, like, we usually do, um, we usually like doing a polka, especially at the end. And it's basically, I mean, there's polkas all over, all over Europe. Um, and in, I imagine in Western Canada, Eastern Canada, well, they're in Western Canada too. But they're great. And like, basically, it's dance music. I mean, all, all of this is technically dance music. I mean, you know, even an air can be a, dan a dance. Obviously, a waltz can. But, I mean, you know, rave music starts here. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's great. Like, it's, it's such a fun one. And usually we get a lot of energy out of this from the audience. That's all your, all your 
focus on it. Just I'm gonna keep I'll keep this one simple, but yeah, it's just D, D, A, C, okay. Let's break this one down for you. This one you can this one I can you can actually take with you. The, the beginning of it, my back backwater polka line. So basically it's in D. Um let's see, so do, 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 do. what I'm doing is I'm just going this is a good great bass line to use for anything. Um, which I think I, I actually borrowed, I got this off John Deacon, of all people. Um, but like, that, that. Oh, so one, five, six, one, five, six, one. So. And I, and I, I go, I, I go like, what was it? So I'm going, it, it sounds fancy. It's, it's not fancy at all. It's, see if I can do it so you can actually really see it. So it's going five. One one six one one six five six one. Ah. I I can't do it slowly. Just whatever heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, and then you go to so look, keeping it simple. Yeah, let's do it like that. Then, he's, then we're going C, C sharp, D. So we're going to say C sharp. Oh, I can't say it. A, D, F, G, C, C sharp, D. C, C sharp, D. I'm just walking up my Tony. Now into G major. Now, now we're in the key of G. Same idea. C. Oh, <laughs> I'll keep it simple here. Okay? I can't talk about C, D, G. <laughs> I'll say one, I'll say one, four, five. G, C, D, G. <laughs> I just went off give up. And then back to D. You go a little faster. So the energy level goes way up. Keep it really simple here. It's almost punk now. Trust me, you always get a good applause there. <laughs> okay, um, there's horn pipes. Unfortunately, and I looked, we used to do a song called Off to California, which is like da da ba da 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 But it gives you an idea. My crude singing gives you an idea. That's a, that's a horn pipe. Um, and which they also have in this book, like I said, O'Neill's. There's, yeah, hornpipes in here. And then Strass bass. Strass bass is like, we don't do many Strass bass. Strass bass is kind of like the Scottish version of a hornpipe. Or it's kind of a Scottish variation of it. That has almost a flam-like feel, like, 
da 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 like da 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 really crap version of Fingal's K, but it gives you an idea. Um, so yeah, how to get started in Celtic. Really, the best thing to do is to do is to look up videos on YouTube, try playing along. Um, um, you can look up the you can look up the sheets for them if you want to. Um, a lot of the ones like Mason's Apron and so forth, you can find the sheet music for them, um, and then look them up on YouTube and you know, you know, kind of between those two things, kind of figure out. Okay, so it's it's this, it's this, um, and then yeah, try playing along to that. And then, yeah, put, put the, you know, put the word out, you know, I'm a bass player in town who's interested in playing Celtic music for any, any Celtic bands. I can guarantee you, considering that at the first Highland Games I ever played, I had another Celtic band asking if I could play with them. So, you know, you put the word out that you're a bassist interested in playing Celtic, you'll get a response. You know, people always need, a, always need, everyone needs a bassist and, you know, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful addition to Celtic music. It, it gives it some, it gives it a lot of force. It gives a lot of power, um, and uh, it's just it's a it's a it's a really fun style of music to play, um, and uh, what more be said? <laughs> so, and there's lots of like, e even though it's it seems like it's a very simplistic style, it it can keep you very it can keep you very busy um, in terms of if you actually want to study the melodies or whatever, um, and lots of different things to work on and you know um that's it <laughs> so i hope everyone had fun and cheers